Hi, and welcome to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast, a weekly conversation with women who found their home in the Mojave Desert. I'm Dawn Davis, and this is episode number 64. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, thank you so much for coming back. If you'd like more information about the podcast, previous guests, want to catch up on previous episodes, or just want to drop me a line, it's all on the website, DesertLadyDiaries.com. And I invite you to engage with me on Facebook and Instagram at Desert Lady Diaries and on Twitter at Desert Lady Diary. Today's episode is a little different than the usual. I sometimes take the podcast on the road and set up shop at local community events where I can introduce people to the podcast or introduce them to podcasts in general. Last month, I did this at two events and thought it might be cool to take my recording equipment and do some kind of woman-on-the-street style interviews. So in this episode, which is still 30 minutes long, I talk to 11 willing participants at these events. They'll introduce themselves and then answer essentially the same five questions. It was really fun. I hope you like it. What's your name? Donna Gowland. And where do you live, Donna? I live in Desert Hot Springs. How long have you lived in the desert? I moved here in 1984 from Lake Tahoe. What do you feel is different here than Lake Tahoe? It's not as seasonal. It's very seasonal there. It's harder to have a business there. And the roads get snowed in, and then you can't, don't have any business. <laughs> I was going to say the snow is probably different. So were you born here, or were you born in Utah? No, I, I was born in um, Northern California. Okay. What brought you here to the Morongo Valley? I was involved with a nutritional counseling business, and the owner of it decided to open an office in Rancho Mirage. And that's what brought you here. How do you like it? I like the desert. At first I didn't. It was such a contrast to Lake Tahoe. But after I got out on the hiking trails, I fell in love with it. You were out hiking this morning here in Covington Park, weren't you? I was. I was over at the preserve hiking, and it was gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful over there. I love that they have the boardwalk, and it's it's a really nice place. When you ever have out-of-town guests come in, what's one or two places that you always make sure you take them when they come if they've never been to the desert? Well, I bring them here to the preserve and also to the tram. I love the tram. So (laughs) those are my favorite places. Cool. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is? The beauty that the desert has in it. It's so peaceful and calming and grounding. Thank you very much, Donna. I appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you. (laughs) What is your name? Kelly Moynihan. Where do you live, Kelly? Near the intersection of the Interstate 10 and State Highway 62. Pretty windy over there, huh? Heck yeah, but not all the time, fortunately. Oh, that's good. How long have you lived in the desert? It is uh, my childhood home. I moved to Cathedral City in the Low Desert. I was 10 years old. We moved to I-10 and 62. I was 14 and lived there and nearabouts until I was about 20. Where did you go after that? Oh, I bounced around Southern California and ended up here on a regular basis and a recurring basis until I was about 24, and then I enlisted in the Navy. Wow. What did you do for the Navy? I was an air traffic controller. Interesting. We were just talking about Melanie Buck's episode, so I think you should listen to that. She was in the Navy as well. Do you find yourself going to the National Park very often? I don't. It's probably an hour from where I live to get up there and into the park. I hear it gets a lot of traffic, way more than it did when I was growing up around here. It's massive. It stretches from one end of the valley all the way down to the other. It stretches from up here in the mountains down to the east end of the valley. And, yep, there's a lot to see there for sure. (laughs) Last time I went, I I went to a place called Warren Peak and hiked up to the top of Warren Peak. And it was quite a vista and quite a hike. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. And there are a lot of things to choose from in there. When you have out-of-town guests that have never been to the desert, where do you take them? The Palm Springs Aerial Tramway is pretty popular. It's a fun little trip up the mountain, and then you're on top of the mountain and you didn't have to drive and you didn't have to climb and now you can see all the way to the Salton Sea sometimes and other times all the way to the Pacific Ocean. So it's a it's a fun little jaunt up there. Yeah, I went on Thanksgiving last year and they had dinner up there. It was really, really nice. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is the sky. 
I went out to the Morongo Band of Mission Indians Reservation there to interview for a job, and, and I was driving around the reservation, and I noticed I could see blue sky with no power lines from one end of the horizon 180 degrees overhead to the other horizon, and it was just amazing. It's beautiful. I say that a different artist paints the sky in the morning and then the evenings. Thanks a lot for coming on. I appreciate it, Kelly. My pleasure, Don. Have a great day. What's your name? Mia Torres. And where do you live, Mia? I live in Joshua Tree proper. And how long have you lived in the desert? Actually, I've only been in the desert for about a year and a half now. So you weren't born here? I was not. I was actually born in Los Angeles. When you decided to move to Joshua Tree, what was it that made you decide to move? Well, I'm a woodworker, and I really have always loved coming out to Joshua Tree and seeing all of the beautiful artisan stuff that I see at all the amazing art shows and stores out here. And I just thought, with the style that I build in, that it might be a perfect spot for me in that regard. And I've been discovering that it kind of is, so it's been great. Cool. Do you ever go into the national park? I do. I love going hiking in the park. I actually have a couple friends who are rangers, so get some good tips every now and then. And, you know, it's such a huge park. I have not explored it as much as I would like to, but I'm looking forward to it as I get into kind of knowing the seasons, how they happen, and when it's less busy but still cool enough to hike and all of that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to exploring more of the longer trails and maybe doing some backpacking and stuff. Awesome. If you ever have out-of-town guests and they've never been to the desert or to this area, what are some of the places that you like to take them and show them? Well, I definitely take them into the park. I love taking people camping because I'm an avid camper. I've been camping since I was four, so I have tons of gear and I love to just take friends in when they just come for like a weekend or an overnight. I also love obviously showing people all of the artists around here. And also one of my favorite places to take people is, which a lot of people don't know is up in Landers to the orchid farm, which is just amazing. I actually love going up there. They have the Goobler Orchid Festival. Oh, I definitely want to go to the festival. I haven't been to that yet either. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is the peace and quiet. It is so incredibly rejuvenating. I've always, well, not always, but mostly lived in big cities. I've lived rurally also and Joshua Tree is definitely, the desert in general, is definitely one of the most serene places I have found to recharge my batteries. And uh, I think that, well, I know that that is really my favorite part about it, is that I can come here and I do absolutely nothing and feel completely rejuvenated to get about this crazy life that we have. <laughs> Thanks for answering the questions. Thank you, Don. Hi, what's your name? My name is Susan Abbott. Susan, where do you live? I live actually right now in Desert Hot Springs. Okay, and how long have you lived in the desert? Well, I've lived in the desert for eight years. Came out in 10, 10, 10. I remember that date. We left uh, Long Beach. That's a good date to remember. It's easy, right? Yes. It should be somebody's anniversary. And what do you do here in the desert? I'm an artist. I mostly paint, but I also do some writing. I'm a poet as well, so I do some poetry writing. And I have a sick girlfriend, and I take care of her. When you moved here, what was it that drew you to the desert? I'd never seen anything like it. When I first came out here, and it was in the summer, so it was in the 80s, and I'd never seen anything like this as a landscape. And I was like, what is this place? I feel like I come to the moon. And what's interesting is we had to move from Long Beach, and a friend of ours lived in Joshua Tree and offered to put up some books for our library, take our library in. So we came to bring out a boatload of books to her, and two days before we came, I painted this kind of brown, coppery, purple mountainscape. It was just a watercolor thing on a small card, kind of brooding sky. And we cut out here, and that day we got to my friend's property, and it was up um, sunrise, and she was on the beginning of Copper Mountain Mesa, and it looked across to the park and those mountains. And it was a brooding sky day with kind of like dark, dark cloud. And the color of the stuff was purple and brown and coppery like that, little orange in it. And I looked at the landscape that, because I just did this painting not knowing what it was, you know. And when I looked at, got home and looked at that painting, I said, oh, my God, that's from our friend's backyard. So it was kind of like a little prophetic that I painted this place having not seen it. And so kind of a draw, a mystical draw there. And we didn't know where we were. We were kind of shopping around where to live. And our friend 
was in the Ricochet Cafe, and somebody walked in and said, anybody know people looking for a place to live? And she said, yeah, I do. She said, well, Ruth Dennison has a property out on Copper Mountain Mesa. And I had heard of Ruth in Buddhist community. Several people I had studied with were students of hers, particularly women that had done movement things and kind of movement Dharma teachings. I had never met Ruth, but I was curious, and so... We decided to come out and have a look, and she invited us. There was a retreat going on. She said, come, have lunch, you know. And so we came out, and we're coming up the dirt road, and, and Dee Dee's going like, no way, no way. This is, it was, you know, bumpy and holes, and we had this old car, and she's like, no way, we're not doing this. I said, do you want me to turn around? She's like, no, no, let's go meet her and see the place. And we did, and it was a beautiful place. So we were out there for two years. Then we moved into town. But yeah, it was just kind of like a, a moon. I'm a coast person. I've, I grew up in New England area, and uh, you know, so to come out here was the last place anybody that knows me would expect to see me. But here I am, and thriving in many ways. So, especially in the art, I think that the landscape does offer that, and the silence and things like that just kind of lend themselves to getting in touch with those places in yourself that are more creative and imaginative. Do you agree? I agree. I think it's, for me, it's the quiet, it's the openness. I mean, you can choose to be busy as all get out here. There's a million things going on, and choices to do stuff today there's like you know a dozen things to do and <laughs> and there's people like what do you do out there and it's like never an issue so for me it was a place of retreat a place to be a voice in the wilderness in a way I kind of cultivate that quiet in myself and don't go to a lot of things that's kind of a, a choice I've made and that's a choice that we can make out here. You can be as busy as you want to be or as quiet as you want to be. Do you get into the National Park much? I can't say much. I get in regularly when Artist Tea's been going on. I've been a, a faithful attender of Artist Tea, a supporter and cheerleader of that since the get-go. And so I go, when it's up and running, I go most Sundays into the park. When I lived in Joshua Tree, just, you know, right downtown, Joshua Tree would just go for a joyride. I call her go for a joyride and do a tour around the park and see what you get. I've been with some photographer friends that go and do night shoots and just to get the feel at night and camped out a few times. But about a year ago, I moved to the low, to the, I, I'm calling not the lower desert, sort of the mid-range desert because <laughs> I'm on the side of those mountains. So I haven't been up as much. And in the off season, no. We've been having artist tea at out of the park because it's not a f- iced tea we call it because it's not an official program uh, but those of us that go regularly and miss it when they don't have it wanted to do something for the summer so we made it iced tea so when you have out of town guests that have never been to the desert what are some things that you do with them or places that you say are must sees well you got to go into the park that's must you have to go into the park and I like to go out to Keys View just because it gives people that vastness and that look of the west and the mountains and the trees. It's, you know, it's kind of a place where you can see the San Andreas Fault. Uh, people get a big kick out of that, the geography of it. I brought people, I really encouraged them when we had a, a wildflower bloom a couple of springs ago that was phenomenal, and I had like three or four guests come during that time, so that was fun to take them around different places there. When I really want to show off, I'll take them to La Copine. <laughs> If that's open. But I think people come up here and they're amazed at how, what good quality of things we do have, like the art. People are like amazed at what good quality there is. Or even like the restaurants that say someplace like Sam's, the Indian place. People from India come and say, wow, you know, you've got that here. And just a lot of alternative things at Natural Sisters and Jenny Q's place and the pizza place. So I think people are amazed at this little outpost that there's such a quality. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is... Mm, My favorite thing about living in the desert is... Night skies. I love the night skies. And that's one of the things I love to paint and do the darkness and to be in the dark... Yeah, I think that's my favorite thing is the night skies. You don't get to see the Milky Way quite like, you know, you're going to L.A. or Long Beach or San Diego. No, you can't see it like that. And Tom O'Kee has the Astronomy Arts Theater, and that's a phenomenal program that brings together the science and the arts and the technology to appreciate it more. So 
it's a great combination event that he does out there. Yeah, it really does bring everything together. Well, Susan Abbott, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you so much. Cool. Piece of cake. Hi, what's your name? Terry Burkhart. Terry, where do you live? East Johnson Valley, um, half a mile off 247 before it goes around the curve. Okay, and how long have you lived in the desert? We bought our house in 91, just in time for the earthquake in 92, but we weren't up here full time until 2000, 18 years. Why did you decide to move to the desert? Well, there's this thing called the affordability of property up here. Our situation was that when we got married, we chose to have airplanes instead of houses. So we didn't have a house to sell when we retired. And we have a friend that I worked with that had had a place up here for a long time and suggested looking and helped us look. And that's how we got here. A place at the right price. So it was more of a financial decision. I would never have dreamed of living in the desert. I grew up in San Diego my whole life until I married him. And he dragged me kicking and screaming to the to the San Fernando Valley. Yes, the airport in Johnson Valley was important, yeah. Well, having airplanes, yeah. Yeah, there was one in uh, Johnson Valley also, a dirt strip up there, so, you know, we used both of them. So once you got here to the desert, what was it about it that you, did you fall in love with it, or did you just kind of get used to it? What was your feeling about the desert? Some beach. Yeah, it was it's peaceful, quiet, didn't have neighbors to speak of, still don't have neighbors to speak of, although uh, an interesting thing happened a couple of days ago got up in the morning and there was boats in our neighbor's yard. <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good size. Not not little putt-putts for the river. <laughs> so. That's interesting. People like to do interesting things out here, don't they? Well, our neighbor lives in, in, in Oregon and uh, it was some relative that she's let park the boats in her yard, which she butts onto our yard. <laughs> that explains it. Do you spend any time in the national park? Not as much as I would like to. We generally get up there once every couple of years. If there's a good rain and then we have wildflowers, yeah. That's a good reason to go. It's beautiful then. It is. It's just a beautiful place. When you have out-of-town guests that have never been to the desert, <laughs> where do you like to take them? Park. No, to the to Joshua Tree. Yeah, to the National Park. It's uh, such a spectacular place. Okay. Yeah. I'll take them up to Keys View and the ranch. That's always good, too. I had... So finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is? Lack of neighbors. <laughs> the neighbors that are there are usually pretty nice. Yeah, it's very quiet. And, you know, it's just pleasant. It's dry. We have a collection of birds and squirrels and coyotes and, you know. <laughs> and I'm sure that they appreciate being out there where they're not really, you know, having to run in the road with cars and lots of people. Yeah. They generally speak. Our garbage disposal is over the fence. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate that. Mm, yep. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today. I really appreciate it. Any, anytime. Hi there. What's your name? Jet Tucker. And where do you live, Jet? I live in Joshua Tree. How long have you lived in the desert? About eight and a half years. Do you ever go to the national park? I do, but not often enough. Why not? I just get busy in my own little world. Do you get out there to see spring flowers? I haven't gone for the flowers. Usually when I go, I go to climb or just drive through up to Keys View and just look. Are you a climber? Oh, an occasional climber, yes. That's interesting. I've met a couple of ladies that I've interviewed, and I wouldn't have ever thought that they were climbers, but it's always interesting to find out when they are. I never thought I would be a climber myself, but I, my neighbor was a climbing instructor, and that's how I started. Oh, cool. When you have out-of-town guests that have never been to the desert, where do you take them? Usually to the park, sometimes generally to Pioneer Town, that's another place, and to 29 Palms over to the Oasis. I'm going to ask you to finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is... Actually, it's the people and the activities, and I love the weather. I'm from snow country, and I like the fact that I can see it, but I don't have to touch it. Me too. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Thanks. Hi there. What's your name? I'm Debbie Solaris. And where do you live, Debbie? I live in Landers and Yucca Valley, both. <laughs> How long have you been living in the desert? And we originally came here in 1985, so we've been here and we're back. For sure, because my husband's been in the military all those times, so we've been back and forth since 1985. So when you moved here, was it because of his military service? Um, yeah, but we kind of liked the area, and it was, you know, secluded from everything and people, and just the wildlife out here was amazing, and the, the skies, and get away from the city life. Especially at night, the stars are amazing, especially this time of year. 
Yes, and the wildlife too, just to see the wildlife was amazing and be, be one with it. Up close and personal with nature, yeah. Do you get into the National Park very often? Yes. Actually, one of my houses where we live at is by Black Rock. It's open to the back. Do you get in during wildflower season? Oh, yes. My whole mountain is wildfire. I'm in a quarter. so. When you have out-of-town company who have never been to the desert before, where do you take them? Well, the first thing they want to see is landers, because they hear so much about landers now before nobody knew about landers. So, of course, we take them to Giant Rock, get them the history there. We take them to our house up here and let them know, especially about the plants, like creosote, how important it is out here. Without our creosote, our dirt would be caliche and what it does and how it gives oxygen. So I'm more into the plants, so I teach them that. And of course, they want to go to Joshua Tree, you know, the little town, and take them to 29 Amaro Oasis and then come into the park. Hi, what's your name? Claudia Boucher. Claudia, how long have you lived in the desert? Well, my boyfriend and I just got a place together, and so officially I've lived here for a year, but I've been coming out to this area since I moved to Los Angeles in 1991. So I've been coming to the park for that long. And then in the last five years, I've been slowly inserting myself into this community by house sitting for people. And that's kind of what led to me actually getting my own place with my partner. You talked about the park earlier. Do you get in there often now? Well, not as often as I would like to. Since I actually am living here now, this past year I'm consumed with fixing up our place and so on. But, I mean, I've regularly, like I said, since 1991, have been (laughs) visiting the park, you know, camping in the park, doing projects. I did an artist residency a few years ago where I spent three weeks almost every day in the park. And I take people who are visiting. But it's gotten a little bit more awkward because it's become so popular, so you have to be a little more strategic about when to go, which entrances to go into, and so on. That's what I find, too. I like to go at night. I take my car, sometimes I take a meal, and I just go up and park and watch the moon come up or just stare back at the stars. And I just bought, somebody was telling me about a portable hammock. I'm waiting for it to come in the mail, and I can't wait to put that in the car and take that with me so that I can just put the hammock out and stare up at the stars in the park. Yeah, that sounds amazing, yeah. So when you have out-of-town visitors, besides taking them to the national park, what are some other things you do with them if they've never been to the desert before? Well, since I'm on the Mesa, the Integratron is a place, Noah Purifoy, Pappy and Harriet's, kind of the usual, (laughs) the Palms, Amboy Crater, if they have time to do that. I mean, that's farther away, but... And it's quite a hike out there. I, I've done that hike from the parking lot to the crater, and it's a pretty good hike. It is, and you know, you have to make sure it's the right time of year, because there have been fatalities recently. So. Yes, don't be a fatality. Bring your water and bring your, you know, your satellite radio, because your cell phone is not going to work out there, and just tell somebody where you're going is pretty important. In the last couple of folks that have gotten lost in the park, we've at least had something to go on where they either left a note with someone or left it in their car or something. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is... Oh, that's a hard one. (laughs) Let's see. Well, it's kind of cliche. It's the open space and the plant life. Well... The flora and fauna in general. I mean, I'm just fascinated with the way creatures, plants and animals survive out here and all the mechanisms that they've developed to adapt. It's just endlessly fascinating for me, So, and it inspires my artwork. And let's talk about your artwork. You do performance art. I do installation and performance. It's a hybrid sculptural installations that sometimes involve a performative live element. How did you start doing that? What inspired you to go in that direction with your work? Well, I've always liked building things. So from a very early age, I learned how to work with carpentry. I mean, super early age. And then I did all sorts of artistic experiments as a teenager. But then that's, I guess, when I got into knowing more about performative stuff. People like Yoko Ono actually doing performance. And then I guess that was the biggest challenge for me as a teenager. I knew that I was really interested in building things and I studied architecture for a while. 
But then I was also really interested in how people interacted with architecture. And so I studied experimental theater groups and things like that and knew that I wanted to find some way of combining experimental theater, action, live art with this interest in fabricating structures. So it's just been a kind of lifelong, you know, I guess that's this sort of thing that I'm always doing is just an endless exploration of that challenge. So I'm looking forward to seeing you because you are on the art tours this year. So I'm looking forward to coming out and seeing that. Thank you so much for coming and talking today. You're welcome. What's your name? My name is Kim Fullerman. Where do you live? I live in Landers, California. How long have you lived in the desert? Only for July, June. I moved in June 1st and it's October. Four months. <laughs> wow, so you're really new. Brand spanking new. Bought a house on uh, five acres. So Why did you decide to move to the desert? Uh, I lived in the middle of Hollywood in a tiny studio apartment for 20 years and thought, you know, let's try something different, like completely the opposite. And I really enjoyed meeting the people out here. I really love the community and just felt like it uh, really was at home kind of with everyone. So. And some people come out and feel that way, and some people come out and they're like, what's happening here? I don't think I belong here. <laughs> Absolutely. And and at the beginning, it's an adjustment. You know, if you're coming from somewhere else and you're not used to the ways of the desert, I was telling friends that I feel like I got jumped in sometimes because I'd cut myself, I'd, I'd fall over things and trip over things and just from learning kind of the ways of everything. But now, I, it's, now it, it's just natural. <laughs> Do you go into the national park? Yes. I've been a couple times with friends since I've been here, but I've been coming to the park since I was in Girl Scouts as a young girl climbing rocks. And so I always loved the park, and that's one of the reasons why I was drawn to this area, because it's always been a really special place, uh, beautiful to me in so many ways. Where are some of your favorite places to go in the park? I'd always start in Hidden Valley. That's what uh, some friends of ours uh, have done. And then we went to the, oh my gosh, what's it called? It's a... Uh, it, it, it sounds really horrible, like the... Um, Maybe that's Skull Rock or something? Skull Rock, and then there's some uh, some rocks that we've climbed that... Uh, I, I can't remember the names of, to be honest. It's like we've kind of just... Most of the time, we'll just drive through the park and then just stop where it looks cool and stop and just like hike wherever we are so uh hall of horrors maybe that's what a house of horrors or hall of horrors that's the other one where i've spent some more time so yeah cool <laughs> now that you're here in the desert have you had people come out to visit you yes i actually one of my best friends is here right now visiting me and i've had already about a visitor a month because i've been here for four months and i've had about four uh, house guests everyone wants to come out here and i post photos and everyone goes when can i come visit you and watch the sunsets and stars and i'm like let's do it you know let's figure it out where are some of the cool places that you take them when they do come oh yeah uh, pappy and harriet's of course i love pioneer town we did la copine Great Flamingo Heights, all the local Moonwind Trading Company, the Moose Lodge, absolutely got to go to the Moose. That's one of my favorite places out here. Yeah, all of that stuff. And we have friends in Joshua Tree also if we take the trip that way. But if we're sticking around just Landers in that area, that's kind of where we end up. So. so finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is... The feast for the eyes. <laughs> People is right there, with, right there with it. You know, that's I, I kind of waffled, but man, just every day I look out in the sky or out by, behind my property, and there's something cool going on, or something cool will happen, or the sky is either either there's amazing clouds and the sunsets are crazy, or there are no clouds but the, the stars are like really bright. That you know, there's always just a feast, like so much to to see around here. It's just, I like to say that a different artist paints the sky every morning and evening. Yes, I love that. Very true, because it's you never know what you're going to get. Every day is different. You know, I've never had the same day twice. Thank you so much for stopping. Thank you very much for, for having me, and good luck. I'll be listening. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Claude Fenton. And where do you live, Claude? Joshua Tree. How long have you lived in the desert? A year. A year now. What brought you to the desert? The climate. I have chronic migraines. And um, I was living in, in Virginia, and for one thing, I couldn't get health care there. But also, the humidity and the storms are a big trigger for me. So I uh, decided to come out here to California, where there's great health care for poor people who can't work. 
because they're sick and also the climate here is just a lot better. It's, it's drier, the air pressure is higher, which is better for me. So I have a, it's, it's helpful for that. Yeah, I'm from back east, so I, if I don't see another snowstorm again, at least that I have to be in, I'm very happy. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the cold. I don't like storms, like a pass, hard pass. Don't, I don't. I, if I never saw snow again, I'd be fine with that. Do you get into the national park very often? I don't go there very often because I have a dog. So I usually go, I like to hike on the MDLT parcels because you can bring dogs there. I bet a lot of people don't know that you can do that, so I'm glad you mentioned it. I think people are seem pretty unaware of the MDL parcels in general, seem to not really know what they are. Especially tourists, I think they just go to the park. I prefer the MDLT parcels. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about it because one thing I like about it is that they're very there's not a lot of people there. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, but there's so much land. It's good for people to explore it. And especially if you live here and you have a dog, I don't want to go hiking without my dog. I'm like, if I'm going out, I'm bringing my dog with me. So I like to hike around there a lot. I understand. So when you have out-of-town guests that have never been to the desert, what are some places that you take them? Ooh, I love taking people to all the different high desert test sites. Those are always really fun to check out. Last time I had an out-of-town guest, we did kind of like a Landers tour. We went and saw the Integratron, and we went to Giant Rock. We got a drink at Landers Bruco. We drove around. That was that was fun. Oh, we went to... You might know what it's called. It's... I forget what it's called. It's like some guy who lives up here. It's actually a little bit closer to Pioneer Town, I think, but it's this weird, I don't know if like commune is the right word. Is it Garth? Garth, yeah. We went over there and that was bizarre. I haven't been there yet, haven't had the opportunity. You should check it out. I would recommend bringing a friend just because there was a whole big mix of people there. One guy there just creeped us out a lot. He was being kind of making weird comments and was like we were just like we're just fine looking around on our own and he was like no I'm going with you and I'm gonna give you a tour kind of thing but it was like making all these weird comments and so we were just like oh we're gonna bye dude well in this day and age I think our awareness to that sort of thing is a little more heightened as well my awareness of that is super heightened I have I think a very good reason to be wary of men especially in a situation where I'm like out in the middle of nowhere, like on somebody's land. I don't know any of these people. I don't know what they're about. I barely even know where I am. Good advice. It was really cool. I just seems kind of like anybody can just show up there and kind of stay there. And the guy that I interacted with made me feel uncomfortable. Good awareness. Glad you were safe. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is... The colors. I love the way that the mountains are so many different colors, not just throughout the day, but throughout throughout the year. I love all the flowers on the plants, and I love, when you look from afar, it, sometimes it seems like everything is just kind of like dusty brown tan color, but then you get up close and the rocks are like red. You know, there's like red rocks and blue rocks, and then there's these like bright green flowers and like red flowers, and there's, so many different colors when you when you get up close and I just get kind of mesmerized by it. I don't know, there's a lot of things I like about the desert, but that's really like striking to me. Thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> this is fun. So you've been you're this is gonna be like a podcast of everybody's oh that's so neat. That's fun. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Diana. Diana, where do you live? I live in Morongo Valley. How long have you been in the desert? About four months. Wow, well, welcome. What was it about Morongo Valley that had you move here? I have friends that I've known for about eight years that bought some land, all artists, and so I needed to kind of get to a place where I could ground and do some art and figure out the next step. And it just seemed like a great space to decompress and meditate. A lot of people that come here find that it's a good place to do that sort of grounding and see maybe what the next step is if this isn't necessarily it. So I can appreciate that. Sure, yeah. 
So while you're here in town, do you go into the national park very often? Yes, I've been three times. I bought a pass for the whole country. I brought my mom there. It's beautiful. Do you have any particular places that you really like to go in there? No, because I'm just not familiar with it, so I just drive through. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's a nice drive. I've done it like on a Sunday morning, and it's great. Yeah, and sunsets are beautiful. It's so quiet. You can hear your thoughts. It's so quiet. Well, and I think that's why it's a good place for grounding, because sometimes we're in situations where it's so distracting and so noisy that we don't have an opportunity to hear our thoughts. And then when you come here, you definitely do. Yeah, absolutely. As somebody who came to the Morongo to visit friends, were there places that they took you when you first got here to introduce you to the desert? No, but I take people when they come visit. Where do you take them? Whitewater Preserve is really cool, the park, Joshua Tree to just eat, Palm Springs is really fun. Finish this sentence for me. My favorite thing about living in the desert is? The sunsets, peacefulness, the Wild West vibe. Just What is it that makes it feel like a Wild West vibe? It's not so built up. It's still very premature. Rural? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast. I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. So during this episode, I asked where people take out-of-town guests in the desert. If you've got some suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Send an email to me at desertladydiaries at gmail.com and tell me some of your favorite places to take out-of-town guests. And I'll mention some of them next week to give other people great ideas. And if you like this episode, let me know so I know if I should do something like this again in the future. Next week, Joshua Tree resident Mia Torres is on the podcast talking about what brought her to the desert, her woodworking business, and also how she got involved in theater. And a special shout out to Adam Page. Thank you so much for your generous donation. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to donate to the podcast like Adam, go to the website DesertLadyDiaries.com and click on the donate button. It's super easy and it helps keep the podcast ad free. Thanks so much for listening.